got the Johnson and Johnson. Say what's up. Johnson and Johnson. She got that. Why she got that? The Johnson and Johnson. She got that Johnson and Johnson. Before we start together, I really want to thank you guys for being a part of this talk show. Y'all really made my day and y'all made everything special. Oh, big head. Oh, the hat will fall. Oh, it's too hard. So you ain't want no interview Cause you said, cause you, cause the way you said that way I said that one part where I was like, and for people that not familiar with you, and you know that I couldn't describe myself. No, you go through with it. Go through with it. That's good. Cause I'm about to say, he wants some fire questions. I can't eat him with some fire questions. Listen, he he had his own platform that he runs, so he's a guest on ours, so we gotta do the show. Okay, ask for whatever you wanna ask them. I have some fire questions, some wild questions. <laughs> Check it out, you heard me. I'm MC Shaky, you heard me. I'm gonna go ahead and take over, you heard me. The Let's Talk Show, you heard me. I'm gonna go ahead and take this switch over. I'm MC Shaky, all the way from New Orleans, Louisiana. Check this out. I am the, I am the greatest, I am the bitch, I am the motherfucker that is the motherfucker of the motherfuckers, you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> So check it out. I am originally from the Seven Water, New Orleans, you heard me? Okay, now we could get it. We had this one time. This was Damn, you just did the fucking one more time. Okay, <laughs> we're finna get started. Hey, everyone, this is Let's Talk Show. We care, we listen, and we try our best to help you guys out. I'm alongside with my guest host, Isaiah. Isaiah, how you What's doing, up? man? What's good? What's good? Listen, I'm going fine. Listen, you guys, we got a father, a blogger, and a social media icon, MC Shake. Thank y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, MC Shake here. Glad to be here at the Let's Talk Show. I'm glad to be sitting in between Isaiah and Rashid, who I know very well, actually, and who are both near and dear to my heart. Listen, I just want to say that we really love you here at the Let's Talk Thank Show. Thank you so much. You better I love me because I will whoop your tail. You know? And I said, <laughs> I never had all that. <laughs> he has, let me tell you something about uh, Shakey, guys. Shakey, one thing about when I first met him, he kept it real from the job. And, that, and I just want to thank you about that. Because also, you know, being a social media influencer as well, it's really hard to meet other social media influencers and, uh, you know, they be positive and, and don't mind helping each other up. So I just want to thank you for that. And not only that, I know that you, you know, your passion is helping people in general. I mean, the love that you have for kids, the love that you have for people. So we just want to thank you here at the Let's Talk Show. And I'm going to pass it to Isaiah. Isaiah, go ahead and get into some things with us. Okay. Yeah, so, she tell us about shaking. Would you go ahead? Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I love talking about child. How, am I okay to say yeah, that you're my yeah, son? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, in the life, this is my son, by the way. He's been my son for two, three years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's spur rotten, but, you know, that's one thing. He just mixed everything he bought for, I got to give it to whatever. It doesn't matter. That's whatever. <laughs> but, um, so I met Isaiah through him, actually. So, just how my son said so many wonderful, marvelous things about me. It's really your turn to say some wonderful, marvelous things about me. <laughs> okay. So, like, okay. This <laughs> From earlier today, from the misconception that, that people had about him, he is a very cool, nice, down to, down to earth person. Cause at first I ain't gonna lie, I ain't like him. If y'all wanna be being real, yeah, let's be real. I didn't, I didn't it's like him, sure. but that's just because you know it was the little scramble that we had at the beginning. Cause you know he was protecting his son. You know, coming in for him, like hold on, wait. So you just gonna bring, <laughs> and then he, you know what? He ain't help. <laughs> nah, that don't, that don't cut. You gotta throw him, throw him away. Yeah, type of you. I get that. But see, the one, then after that, you know, the bonds grew through time. Yep. Like shaky. So I was like, you know, every single time he got on the phone, I was like, I was like, I didn't like him still. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh uh, because he did me wrong at the beginning, type of But now he, I, I like him because he, he's cool. He's cool. He's real nice. After I got to speak to him, he, he once I met his nice side. I think everybody, everybody have their own mean side when you first meet anybody. They have their little. And one thing that I tell people all the time, you guys, but you guys better be nice to me because if not, I got somebody that can get into your whole life because of me. Okay, not the life story. <laughs> get into about your life. All right, so and okay, so I, I I don't I didn't expect you to like that, but I will say this: as you grow into this lifestyle, uh, LGBTQ plus lifestyle. And you develop, see the people, and I was once a piggyback, like you said, mm -hmm. people develop the, 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 some, I'm old school, everybody know, I'm, I'm 38, uh, I actually make 39 in November, so I'm like, like next month, so I'm like, excuse me about that, one more year before I'm before it, but, 
uh, in, in the gay life, that's grandma age. I mean, the, the life expectancy for us is very, very, you know, because my gay children have Because we do move, man. Yeah, it's like, for real, we don't speak. So it's like, you know how people have dog years, there's also a thing called gay years. And so, it's very fast. But, um, I said that to say, in the era I come in, gay people were not accepted as we are now. Right. Right. And so, what happens was, we as gay people were cast out from our traditional normal families. And so we went out into the world and discovered other gay people who taught us bars in the gay life. So that's where the gay familial structure can't come from. The gay mama, the gay daddy, the drag mama, drag daddy, all these different things that we have. All right, so I, coming from that life and coming from that knowledge, take that so seriously. So when somebody's like, hey, child, you're my child for life. You're going to marry with you. You're always going to be whatever. And so that's what it's going to be. And so in the case of that, when you have your gay children, and if you take that seriously, you'll understand why you have to, you have to protect them from the world that is against them. We're black, we're gay, that's with men. So a lot of times, it's a lot of times, there's three strikes against us already that they want us to be against. And then, Especially as being an athlete too, because I had a hard time when I was in college. So like I said, I just want to thank you for just, you know, ride with me, sleeping with me. Because I really had a hard time. A lot of you guys don't know that I was a college athlete and I had a struggle when it was in college because when people start knowing about you and then especially if they think you look good, you know, I'm the king or whatever. So <laughs> a lot of them think that I guess. And so it's even harder for us because it's like, why you like this? You know what I'm saying? I get that question. So when you asked that earlier, I was really laughing, so I just said it it was the, so I ain't gonna put that on. But um, it's really just hard being, you know, a bisexual man for me. Because a lot of people that are not bisexual and open with the situation. So it's really, um, it was really hard on me. So I just want to thank you for just being there. Call me. No problem. Yeah. And it's funny that, that you say that because there's a lot of different games. It's a lot. It's a lot of different. It's we got the crazy, lot. the wild, the mentally retarded. So you got a lot of them. And you got some educated ones out there. But through time, I'm trying, I, I've been, you know, I've been listening to all the, the constructive criticism from him. Um, you know, at the beginning. So I took that in. I, instead of taking that in as hate, you know, like he hate me type of I took it in in a mature way by saying, okay, he's just telling me like what I did was wrong. And I took it into myself saying that it was wrong what I did. So and then I kind of switched what it up. Did you huh? did you do? I didn't help. <laughs> what you did? Let's say that I didn't help. But he, that was the part about everything. And that's how you that's how you gain a bond with anybody if you help. Just help. But since he told me about that, I, I grew to know that. And then that's when, I, for ever since now and on forward, I done been down for this man. Like, right. ride or die type me. Anybody in this room? I'm not. I'm going to hit you with my car. It's just that on that. And then she knows 2019, whatever. But just know I'm more wise now because of shaking. <laughs> so you get to the questions then. Let's get into that. Cool. Okay, so what? Um, so the first question is, how would you be able to teach somebody that's an upcoming, upcoming influencer like yourself? Like, how would you teach us to become more better in our own grass? Um, I think that so the the influencer spectrum goes into just understanding the business model, and it depends on what app, and it depends on what you're doing as far as content. Content is king, but I found that I was more successful as an influencer when I just stuck to my gun. Not, you know, and it's because I have some, I've developed friendships in the industry as well. And so sometimes my job will conflict with the friendships. Yes. And so I have to make a decision. And so uh, for an influencer, I would say stick to your guns. And a lot of times when I make a decision for the friend, it come back up to bite me in the tail. Instead of me just sticking to my guns and my friend respecting what it is that I'm doing. Uh, and so, don't so don't hesitate, baby. Don't hesitate. Say, if this is what you have and this is what you're talking about and this is your content, stick with it. And, and that's what it is. Stick to your guns because your, your bosses are the people that yeah. are viewing your content. And it's funny that you say that because we had well, we had a conversation probably a week and a half ago and I was like, I really want to take this to the next level. Like, I want to be on TV with it. And right. I was like, it is so hard because every time everybody always sending me people that I know to talk about. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about them. I don't want to lose that friendship with them. Mm -hmm. And so you gave me some good advice and I'm glad that you said that. Don't because, be scared. Yeah, Just take it. Do, do your own thing. Because yeah, everybody has a job. We all want a job. And I'm pretty sure they'll probably want to find something to talk about me about. Yeah. Right. 
everybody has the boss. Don't think for two seconds that as an influencer, as a content creator, as a blogger, as a YouTuber, as a whatever, mm -hmm. that you don't have a boss. Your, your job becomes somebody you're responsible for. So in the case of the tube or in the case of like one of these apps like Michael, uh, your boss are the people that are paying the bills. Your boss are the people that are pressing the buttons, commenting, sharing it, the people that's doing it, watching it, watching the ads. And getting, these people are your boss. That's your, this is who you answer to. They answer. When, so that's who you gotta always remember. Like your friend is your friend, but is your friend gonna pay your bills? Right. Or is your boss gonna pay your bills? But people will get the, the misconception of the two things uh, like mixed up. Like you got the part where you want to listen to people's advice, and then you got the part where should I take my own and just go with my own way. So it's like that's where I always end up getting stuck at, especially in my own craft. Because there's always these people that will come in and be like, do this, do that, and do this. Because but then I'll be like, I got my own way of doing right now. And you see, that's hard for me too because I, sometimes I'll be like, is it trustworthy? Like sometimes I don't trust my instinct. And it's like I second guess myself. So like I know in my head what I want, but I don't go with what I want. You know what I'm saying? So like that's why you take that advice, but sometimes it's not always good to take that advice from other people. So I do what you know. To, to, you know, when it's, at the end of the day, you have to understand what if you take it, you're not gonna take it to the next level if you don't. Whether it's the right decision or the wrong decision. Because there were some decisions I made that were wrong. And I made mistakes before several times. And uh, I apologize for those mistakes that I had. I've owned them and I've moved on from that. But I will say that when it comes to just this industry in particular, there has to be a, 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 a place that you have to say, this is my go to place and I know what to do. And you have to be decisive and stick to that decision. That's what so, you we know, we know a lot about you. Like I said, you're a follower, you're a blogger, you're a social media icon. So, when did you take your uh, your social media to the next level? Did you remember like a year? It kind of like it was, it was, it was, there was, there's definitely levels to it. Uh, social media for me, I, when, so, okay, I understand. So, um, my thing, my social media story happens like this. Uh, before, in 2000, I was introduced to social media and social networking through black planning and stuff like that. And it was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Um, and then there was the MySpace age, and Facebook was just starting. There was really no Twitter, no IG, no those things existed. Uh, and then I went to prison right when the MySpace page. MySpace page was all um, like pretty much since hype. So it was MySpace. Facebook existed, but nobody was on it but college kids. Um, you love Facebook. Now, yeah. like, you basically got ahead of all of us. Like, you yeah. was already in this game. Yeah, the precursors to that was like Black Panther and stuff. And so then, uh, after, so YouTube existed, but not in the way it has now. It was so different. It was just like, it was very few people. Like, they didn't have it. Like, anybody can post content on YouTube. So, basically, what you're saying, YouTube back then was easier than it is now. Because everybody just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. YouTube was, it was definitely not saturated. The market was very few people with content creators on YouTube. Cause you guys think this is not even the advent of smartphones. The iPhone one had maybe come out in 2006, and so they just getting that. The camera capabilities weren't there, so it wasn't that. People who did YouTube videos were people that had camera systems that could come home and edit them and then upload them, which would take hours and hours. Out. Right. Because we were dealing with shit like dial up and right. there was there was the cable internet that was just all that was just started. So this was the era of this. I know it's a lot before the time, but so I went to prison. For ten years, nine years in one month actually. So when I came out, not as Instagram, not as MySpace, not as Twitter, not as, not MySpace, MySpace right here. There's Twitter, and there's all. What the fuck? So, is you, this so you felt like you had to, it was like a catch up moment. It was definitely a catch up. We're gonna take a fifteen second break. Huh? So uh, my friend uh, actually that this past week just put me on live, and <clears throat> we went in Rihanna's live. We went. And this was, and so I'm like, wait, because understand the live streaming thing. I had not got. I never. It was never there. We never had that. Uh, and so my first time live streaming, we went to Rihanna's live and she was doing something, and it was like, yeah, you could talk to her too. I'm like you know you can. 
Yeah. Like, here she could type something. And type something. She didn't pay attention to it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it was just like, but she was engaging with, her, with, with the fans. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is the future of life. Nothing beats this. I don't have to be guarded by a, a, a movie or a show or anything. Like, the only thing I have to do is talk. There's no, there's no middleman between me and whatever my favorite celebrity. Right, right. That was amazing to me. And I said, this is where I'm going, this is where I'm going to live, this, this, this is where And so when I made my Instagram page, I named myself MC Shake It Live, because I knew I didn't trust live. So I made, named myself MC Shake It Live. Um, and then I kind of started New Orleans blogging and stuff like that, but it's kind of like I'm doing a live stream. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gave a local New Orleans shade room with a face to it. Uh, a story came across my desk about Super Saiyan, and that was the first time any story of mine ever hit me. Shave them, and I was like, Whoa, I'm really a block. Um, then there was the second time, the second big story I had was about the Brett and Julia and me. I was the one who uh, basically uh, brought for broke the story about their relationship that got posted on Shave Room. And uh, this was the first time they actually tagged me in the post and left my ex in the so, yeah. so, so, so uh, I watched from those situations kind of go from a local New Orleans 10, 15,000 people to 50,000 people that were following on IG. And then when the shit they hit with the thing from uh, Julie, it was like almost 100,000 overnight. And then, because uh, that video is still up on uh, their page and still has like, it's like, from, like 5 million views right now and broke the bracket from Julie. Going. And then, uh, kind of where I am now came from a mixture of uh, Kiki Y, Eric um, those are the big stories for me. And uh, then I, when we did the show, we did the pilot for the show for Tiny in Chicago, and they had a little situation where um, the show when we posted a video of Shamar rapping, and I was dancing, and I'm like, who is that in the thing? And a lot of people were tagging me. Like Shamar rapping? And that's, and that's the little shit. <laughs> and so, uh, so I kind of made the shade room three times in different eras. And I can honestly say, for me, those were like, I can say these are key points in, the, in, in my blogging. So that was the growth? Like that was the growth, yeah. What would you tell other people that want to be an influencer? Um, be consistent. Be opinionated. Uh, for every topic, have an opinion on it. Stand on your opinion. Uh, be, be well versed, well read. Don't don't shy away from knowing something. To be a good influencer is to meet someone who is a good nosy person. <laughs> no, 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 I'm trying to say a better way, but if you, you gotta know the stuff and talk. Yeah, yeah, you gotta know. So if you're not nosy and you don't like looking at stuff and being interested in stuff, you're not gonna be a good. Because this is yeah, this is what we come up for you to do. People can make up their own minds, but an influencer is just that. I'm supposed to influence you with what I'm talking about about how this story is. There's two ways to look at something. And so you're, as an influencer, you're, that's what they're paying you for. They're paying you for your take on this. How is this? So that you can influence the decision whether you agree with it or not. I'm not telling you when you're interviewing, it's their job. It's, it's your job to ask a question, but it's their job to develop an opinion. Right? Right. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to influencing, you're influencing that opinion. That's where it comes from. And so uh, so be opinionated. If you say, if you say this, that is blue and I say it's teal, I'm, I say teal. I'm gonna roll with teal. And you stick on it. You say why? I'm gonna say why it's teal. You say no. This is blue. So, so since you are still on the top of apps and stuff like that, and your growth and like apps, so what was your biggest money making of all apps? Y'all say? Um, uh, in a okay. So I started a cosmetic line um in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Slip cosmetics. Slip cosmetics. Yeah, I started cosmetics and, 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 and whatever. And I grossed uh, nearly two hundred thousand dollars with the sale. Uh, so I directly correlate that to Instagram success. So while while be it, I have never made the most money off of Instagram in that sense. I made the had I not had the Instagram influence. I could not have made those sit there. So, so I attribute that to Instagram. So technically, Instagram made me the most money. The second most would be the Bieber. Uh I probably made maybe $100,000 on the Bieber so far. And that's clear. Um, but the third most would be kind of like YouTube. YouTube is a consistent check. It ain't as big as that. So, so you're saying that you're not 
So you cross over the big old. How did how did you how did you grow it so big? Did you did you you know bring everybody over? Because you got on big old, you like you know start moving over there. <laughs> well, uh um, I um, so how that worked for me was I I went I went at first I hated. It. I was like, I'm only going to stand there. Um, uh, I, but then I started monetary value, and I said, well, I can understand this. And so I took about a month, and I went on the verb page, and I just kind of looked about the food and different, and learned who was doing what. So I'm on with it. I, I had, I've studied. I studied the people. I studied what it was. I go in there. I give it I give it an hour or so. They just figure out what this is about. What works. Why these people get this? Why these people get that? Um, there was still, I, I needed to learn what I did get on there. When I went on there, I already kind of felt like I had to do my homework on there. They had not done their homework on me. I had to do my homework with them. Right. They had to do my homework. So it was, no, it was part of being a good block. Yeah. It was, it was easy. Like, you, you're playing with somebody that doesn't even, they have to play catch up. So when I'm jumping up here and I'm fussing with you and saying this, it was like, how do you know this? You have to, you have to look it up and come back later. It's over with. The, 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 the scape of social media is of the nine. It's instant. It's either here, if it's here, not. It's, it's, it's popping today. Next week, it's going to be somebody else going to be talking about. It's just it's, it's uh, the way you at right now type of thing. And so with that being said, it was like for me, um, just kind of trying to be a, a step ahead of the game was going to So changing over topics, you know, we understand that you are a great MC. So tell us how did you get into that? Um, I'm the greatest MC. But, uh, <laughs> the greatest, he said. <laughs> yeah. um, Bounce was my first love. New Orleans Bounce was my first love. I have, I have been involved and engrossed in New Orleans Bounce since. Uh, I can remember actually to be honest with you. Uh, my uncle's a bounce artist by the name of Ricky Pete. Um, and he's a family thing, huh? Yeah, it's t- well, mm-hmm. we, we, I it think runs in the room. Yeah. Music does run out. I got something I'm gonna draw to this. So I guess it runs in the family. It does. <laughs> um, and he, he was he's a rapper, came out with a song, and it was popular, and I was like, oh my god, I love this. And I, I think it was, it was for me for something, he used to do our local parties and uh, DJs and stuff like that. And one time, I, uh, you know, my uncle just getting on the mic, and it was like it was like power or something. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, he's a part of the song that goes, "I'm I'm that stand with no others on the map," and so I'm hearing the crowd going, "And they don't play," and it was just like, "It's the hype, really. it's like the energy. it's the I'm, energy that you get off that." What is happening here? And it's like, I was like, I gotta do this. I don't know what this is, but I, I need to do it. And so it kind of became my first love. Um, so I started actually dancing. I started out dancing, and I was still scared to get on the mic for years. Started out dancing. Um, as a dancer, I kind of evolved and got older. So when you get older, start like getting a few in the wings and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, dancing is not for me. Um, that evolved me into DJing. So I learned how to DJ, but then I realized I don't like to stand still. And then that, so I'm trying to avoid the mic for some reason. I wasn't avoiding it because it's like, this is not what I'm doing. And so, so you avoided that because you more on the blogging side? No, no, I, I avoided it then because I was scared. I was going, I was born into it. I knew I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what it was. I started doing DJ networking, I started producing, promoting those things where I was marginally successful at. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was uh, R.I.P. Rest in Peace Blazer, aka Darrell Ware, who actually said, "Listen, I need you to MC. Here's the mic. Do something because these people are here." Mm-hmm. And I was wasn't able. I, I didn't put it out. It was in my hand. And uh, so MC Shaker just kind of grew into that. And I encompassed the other things that I had learned along the way, trying to find MC. Right. So I was. Pretty legal. I, could, I was a good MC because I knew how to DJ, so I could basically DJ from the from the mic. Right. I was a good MC because I knew what to make the people dance because I was a dancer. I knew how to make you dance. I was a good MC because I was a producer because I knew what to break down to go. I was. So a, when you was doing all of that. What would you hope to get? You know, out of the music. Um, you just trying to make people dance. The energy. Energy. It's it's just energy. Bounce music is that. It's the energy, it's the feeling. You can't. Yeah, as I, much, think about it. I have tried to show this to people my entire life, and they don't get it. But as soon as I bring them to the wall and put them in a club, in a little club in a project, and it's hot in there, they got one air conditioner, one bathroom, <laughs> and they got nothing to they got, I know everybody in there sweating. Everybody in there sweating buckshots, but guess what? They're not going to leave that dance floor, and you feel that tremendous amount of transformative energy, they get it after that. And it's like, okay. Because they, I couldn't, I couldn't know how to explain that. Yet. Why are you here? Like the, you're the hole in the wall, and somebody probably out there for the shoot somebody and everything. All this is going on, but you're not going to move because that beat is controlling you. Right? Mm-hmm. Me on the mic telling you bend over is controlling you. It's not, a, not nothing you can do. And so it's like, and for me, it was definitely, definitely, definitely going to be a, a thing where I was in love with it from day one. I have been in love with this ever since. I'm going to probably be in love with it until the rest of my life. 
So it's one of your lines. It's one of your you know. My tag lines MC Shaker make the hoods go crazy. That is my definite tag line. <laughs> uh, but I might say anything that might give my hair a little bit of a lot. And when I'm in that mode, I'm in that mode. Right. So like what would you say like like is New Orleans like the type of place where like do people get like is it a gay like down there is they accept into the gay? Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say you where you can't go, you can't New Orleans is da, da, da. No, New Orleans is a very progressive city. Uh, we don't even have like in the gay clubs they're straight people in the straight clubs they're gay people nobody cares like mm -hmm. I, I didn't see and, that. Shit, yeah. like and, and I, I don't I didn't see a lot of segregation until I left New Orleans I'm like wait what a minute you know <laughs> and so um, New Orleans is very accepting of the LGBT people Q plus community actually uh, one of the biggest artists I ever knew was was Big Frida and Big Frida's that we know is yeah. yeah so New Orleans got to be because of a who holding us to Dallas a dude named Freedom with a wig a dude named Frederick with a rig on you know and that's what I think it is so know? what sets all of y'all apart from each other like cause, it, cause you do got some people that might be out there be like they all sound the same so what sets y'all apart from each it's the personality the personality we all have different personalities we, and, Bill, and it sounds the same to y'all, but it sounds so different to us. Right. And so when we do something, it, it feels like, from New Orleans Vows, it's like they feel as if the, they get a different feeling from me than they do from Freedom. And they get a different feeling from Freedom than they do from Logan. And they get a different feeling from Logan than they do uh, mm -hmm. High Sizzle from whoever. Um, <laughs> I, never, I, I never even heard of that person. They, who is that? Is Keno from me? Huh? Or no? no. He's not. Oh, he just did. So y'all hate? Do y'all? Okay, so that's a good question. I just said that. So do y'all hate people that that enter that take y'all culture and then run with it and then they go? Shall I say they might get successful or not off of it? Do y'all hate those type of people? Yeah. It's our culture. They don't get it. They don't do it right, and we feel like they they, they try to commercialize it. And they but, plan. Right, so a bounce is not supposed to be commercialized. It's supposed to be rough. It's supposed to be rough. It's supposed to be rugged. It's not supposed to be all cute, nice, and in the package. It's supposed to be given to you. I like how he said. I like how he said. It's supposed to be given to you authentically, authentically. So that's why you like moving the, you know, the body movements and all that. Okay. I mean, you do have some time, sometimes where you got some people that are like, I do hear the aggression in like New Orleans music versus somebody that's not from New Orleans. I, now that I'm hearing it, that when he said that, I just noticed that because when you hear like a New Orleans, like Big Frida, for example, she, you hear the aggression. Mm -hmm. You heard her like trying to take over with that, with the bounce, with the brrr, like all that. Love it. Then you got like, you might got like Keno. You know, it feels like it's hard, like trying to be like playful with, like just trying to play with it versus the, the aggression. So you know, we all know that you have a big line in Silk Nation. Can you tell us a little bit about Silk Nation? And who they are to you? Yeah. Uh, we were sitting out one day. We were, I used to have a show in New Orleans called The Tea at 3. Uh, it was an Instagram live show. We do it every day. It was on uh, uh, IG. It was, it was the message show in New Orleans. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was that show. They was looking for it. If I didn't do it one day, I, I, was, I was getting all kinds of deals. Bitch, you better come live. Bitch, you want to put up. Mm -hmm. So The Tea at 3 uh, became my little show in New Orleans on IG Live. And uh, what did they want? They asked what, what did they want to they said, shit, we gotta give us the name, we want the name. I was like, what you mean? Like the beehive or something like that. I said, well y'all think of it, I don't know, but I don't mind. And they came up with uh, the sippers because they were sipping the tea that I was serving. Right. Um, and so that's kind of like and it stuck. But so when I tried that, so I tried to um, trademark copyright uh Sipper, but I couldn't because of course they didn't. So I had to find something else. So I, I, I was listening to uh, Dish Nation, Pop Nation, one of those things, Live Nation. I was like, okay, this is The Sippers, the Sippers of Sipper Nation. And so that's kind of like where that came from. Yeah. So what, what does the green come from? Okay, so the first time I got posted to the show, and as far as the story I was telling was about Super Light Green. Mm -hmm. So it kind of became my signature. Who is this green haired person, you know, whatever that's talking about, Super Saiyan? And bring it all right, MC Shaky, we want to thank you for being on here, you guys. Like I said, this is MC Shaky. He's a father, a blogger, and a social media icon. So we just want to thank you for being on our show today.